what is happening what's happening welcome back uh, to our fifth lesson so lesson number five will be uh, diving in a bit to uh, the, the support and resistance levels but strictly and mostly I want to focus on the moving averages on this lesson but I'm gonna have to revisit again the support and resistance levels um, more especially on the smaller time frame so zooming on to the age four right so zoom on to the age four Excuse me, and how you would track these support and resistance levels is on the H4. I would really love to also use both candles and wicks to basically see. So, on the H4, I would rather use the median of all the wicks. So, if I were to draw a level of resistance on this market, I would use this trend line with the crosshair going on to the right, ready to the right hand side to basically get a median line that will touch all these lines. If you look at this, you've got the, this line touching all wicks. So this line touches pretty much most wicks on this area over here. So I would then use that level as a level of resistance. Same applies to this level of support. I would use a median line that would probably touch most wicks. So probably drag it a bit more up to that level so we can see a nice little ranging market from there. So if you zoom into the hourly, you can see that this level will be a clean level for entries if you basically look at it from that perspective. You can even then on this time frame, maybe even like modify this level to even get finer entries, modify it to maybe you get like a cleaner level and a logical level that you can use your cleaner entries. These levels will be levels that you can use for entries. And if you look at this, we're really just ranging. We're moving up and down, up and down with market giving you uh, fake cards in that level over there. And you also have a fake card on this level. So this is how I would then mark out my levels of support and resistance on the smaller time frames. This will make sense as we go forward. And it will even make much more sense on how you would actually get entries uh, on these levels, using these levels. So let me just actually use a... Um, like a, a market that is actually available for us to use. So if you look at this, I would then maybe want to use both wicks from the left hand side to get entries on the right hand side. Go to a previous market, basically uh, use the same method to see if you would have been able to catch entries using this method. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. let's see what level we could have used to basically like get proper entries. Let's refine this. Let's refine this. So let's look at this level over here. Suppose you were trying to find entries. So I would then look at this market there from the right hand side, obviously dragging into uh, the from the left, dragging to the right. Sorry, I would look at marking out both levels, both wigs. So if you look at this. Both weeks, week one and week two marked out direct to the right. You can see how this level then becomes a significant level of support that you could have used to basically find your entries. Proper week entries in the market dips into these levels, then it just rises and rallies to the upside. So this will be uh, added on to the other videos as we move forward. But this lesson is strictly meant for the moving averages. So we've got two moving averages that we use. Sorry about that. We have got two moving averages, so please click on the indicator uh, tab and basically type in moving averages. So these are EMA, so you favorite to type EMA, but let's maybe just keep it simple. Let's type moving average, moving average. You can select that exponential moving average one select the sec select again. So you click on it twice so that you have two moving averages. Thereafter, you go to settings. The first one will be period eight, period eight, and that one will be the red one. So all of us will be using the red one, period eight. And then the second one will be period 18, uh, period 18. This will be period 18 and this one will be blue. So period eight and blue. So these then will be the moving averages we will be using moving forward. So period eight and eight, and these are EMAs, exponential moving averages. These are the moving averages we will be using from now on moving forward. So two things that I need to explain on moving averages, right? Moving averages confirm the directional change. They confirm the, 
the change of a trend. They confirm the beginning of a new trend as well. So it's important that we understand how these moving averages work. So as you can clearly see on the charts, when the blue moving average is above the red, the market is on a downward trend. When the red is above the blue, then the market is on a bullish trend. So this is what we're only looking for on the moving averages. We're just looking for the cross on the EMAs. If you can clearly identify the cross after the cross, then you can actually take entries going up. This is after you have confirmed everything that we will be talking about when you actually have a confluence of all the tools that we will be talking about. And then you can actually take entries based on the moving average confluence as well that we have on the screen right now. So suppose you have analyzed and you can clearly see that the market is at resistance and you wanna actually short this market, but you're not sure that the market is gonna drop as yet, right? And you're just gonna wait for the moving average confirmation. So the higher the time frame, the later your entries Will be so on the h4 your entry would have been there but if you zoom into the h1 your entry would have been there your entry would have been there and also if you zoom into the 30 minute this is how then we actually like indulge into smaller time frames your entry would have been literally right there at the top so your entry would have been a lot earlier on a small time frame it's even worse if you go to 15 minutes so this is how you can then use different time frames to basically confirm your entries using the emas as well with everything in intact with everything intact on the m15 your entry would have been around about here at 1.0930 uh, and on that 30 minutes would have been on 1.0980 on the hourly would have been at uh 1.0970 and on the age four would have been extremely late around about 10930 uh, so that would have been a late entry the smaller time frames are earlier the entries that's the only thing you're looking for that moving averages the cross of the emas confirm the direction of the trend so you can also use this to kind of like understand where the market is going from high time frames look at the moving average crossover situation if you can't see clearly you can even go to the line chart to see that okay the moving average is actually crossed over here and they haven't crossed over there's a high chance that the market can actually push down another thing that i need to also make note of is that the market tends to come and test the moving averages like this the market will come back to test the moving average because uh, the moving averages are also used as levels of support and resistance so it's important that you understand then how they work so that you will be able to get entries based on the moving averages so if you understand how these work these can be uh, of a high 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 advantage to your trading career and you can basically catch beautiful moves on the moving averages there's not much to know really on the moving averages i don't really use them for anything else other than the confirmation of my entries confirmation of the trend if the blue is above the red then we know that the market is trending down but if the red is above the blue then we know that the market is trending up on the gold chart that we did analyze earlier you can see how right now we actually had a crossover earlier on there so the market is clearly still on a downward trend so if you were willing to buy on this market you could easily zoom into a smaller time frame let's suppose that you're waiting for buying this market probably waiting that the market will start buying you would zoom into a smaller time frame to basically confirm an even earlier cross of the emas you can see that even on the smaller time frames they're actually not giving us what we're looking for so you could you wouldn't even try and attempt and buy this market as yet because the moving averages haven't really confirmed that the market is going to change directional bias so if you want to buy, you wait for the moving averages to cross over, confirming the, the directional uh, trend change, and then you can then start tra taking trades based on your moving average crossover situation. Look at how we crossed over here. This was a beautiful crossover. After this, they came back to retest the moving averages from there we rose, retest that moving average went up, retest that went up. So the market tends to come back to retest the moving averages quite a lot. This could clearly be a retest of the EMAs before we can actually start dropping to the downside. So these are important to note and these are important to understand because they can be of a high advantage to your trading career. This lesson was strictly about the moving averages and I will see you on the next video.